Hey, Algebra Kids, I've done adjusted your calendar, and I'll be giving you a fresh one in class. But I went ahead and changed things around a little bit. We're going to go ahead and cover properties, which properties are to high school math, um, well, middle and high school math, what the scientific method and metrics are to middle and high school science. You're going to keep seeing them. You're going to keep seeing them pop back in. These are arbitrary names for things you already know are true, or at least if you don't know they're true, you should. So this is one of those sections where you have to know these names to go with concepts you already recognize. Now, I thought we would be doing this without music but because the internet is acting all sorts of wonky today, but it looks like I got my iTunes radio back here. I do have my study station on, so maybe it'll come in and out. So you may just be listening to my dulcet tones today. So let's just jump right in. You're going to be doing a lot of pausing and copying in this video, just be warned. All right, let's start with the commutative pro property. How we can help you remember that, <clears throat> we commute, that means we travel, and it's kind of like changing order. You go from home to school, from school to home. It's still the same voyage, it's just happening in two different orders. And really, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the commutative property tells you that the order in which numbers are added does not change the sum, and the order in which ad numbers are multiplied does not change the product. Here's a couple of addition examples, 4 plus 3, or excuse me, 3 plus 4 equals 4 plus 3 and x plus y equals y plus x. And then multiplication, 2 times 3, 3 times 2, g times h, h times g. So commutative property. Notice the lack of an n in the word commutative. While I don't grade you on spelling, I will remind you of the correct spelling as we go along. The associative property is next. The people you associate with are your group of friends. So that is one way to remember this, that you associate with your group. It does not matter how you group addition or multiplication, the answer will be the same, as long as it is all addition or all multiplication. And again, there are examples that you should have in your notes to help you work on recognizing. This is 2 plus the quantity 1 plus 3 is the same as the quantity 2 plus 1 plus 3. A plus the quantity B plus C is the same as the quantity A plus B plus C. And then you have the same thing with the products here. Now, it is important to me that you do not do with this what many pre-algebra students do with the integers category of numbers. They automatically assume, I see a negative sign, therefore, it must be an integer. Well, no, because negative 1.4 is not an integer. Just because we see parentheses does not automatically mean, oh, that's it, it must be the associative property. I need you to avoid that mistake. That is not necessarily going to be true. Um, so you need to be more wary of the fact that you are specifically looking at grouping and notice that the order of the terms in the expression on each side of the equal sign, the order isn't changing. So that is an important thing to recognize, that that order is not changing. Okay? Just a brief moment, I want you to stop. And it's not hammer time. No, I want you to stop and think. Um, that's a uh, very early 90s reference that you probably won't get. You can ask your parents. Um, it would be stop and hammer time would be the things that they would recognize. Anyway, moving on. So does the commutative property hold for subtraction or division? What about the associative property? I want you to jot down an example of each in your notebook to share with me in your warm-up on whatever day we have class next. So jot an example of each. I want you to be able to show me that the commutative property does not hold for subtraction and neither does the associative property and it doesn't hold for division either. So I want, I want one of each that you can show me that that's not true. Okay? Don't forget. Now we go on to our inverse properties. The word inverse should make you think opposite. Inverses are opposites. The addition um, property, the inverse property of addition, or additive inverse property, if you prefer, says that when you add a number and its opposite, you automatically get zero. So any number plus its opposite is zero. Those are zero pairs. That's what we call those. They're zero pairs. Okay? The inverse property of multiplication, or the multiplicative inverse property. When you multiply a number by its reciprocal, also known as multiplicative inverse, the result is one. And that is always going to be true. So those numbers are reciprocals. That would be the equivalent to the zero pairs for addition. So the examples for addition, 2 plus negative 2 equals 0. n plus the opposite of n equals 0. The um, multiplication example, 6 times 1 sixth equals 1. m times 1 over m equals 1. And I'll give you one more here in blue. How about 2 thirds times 3 halves most definitely equals 1. 
Now on to the identity properties. In these, the number's identity doesn't change. In other words, the number itself isn't changing. And when you ask, can we keep a number from changing? Well, when we add zero, it doesn't change. And when we multiply by one, it doesn't change. And I know, again, you already knew those things. Just attach this name to it right here. Okay, that number's identity is staying the same, whether you add zero or multiply by one. So that's the additive identity property here, the multiplicative identity property here. The distributive property. We've already used this in class. You already know this exists. We just got to make sure we recognize it and use the correct name. When you multiply a sum or a difference by a number, distribute that multiplication to all terms in the sum or difference. Here's an example of one with a difference. Easy, right? Just make sure you recognize that name. Um, also note, you could have your B minus C here and your A here. You'd still get the same answer. Multiplication property of zero. Anything times zero is zero. Duh. I didn't write you an example for this one. There you go. Or there you go. Okay, anything times zero is zero. Now, this is a good chance for me to talk about this right here. Now, dividing by zero is a whole other story. Let's take a brief minute for you to put into your notes and into your brain why you are not allowed to divide by zero, why it is basically mathematically illegal for you to divide by zero. Mathematically illegal. Because of this, okay, are you ready? So here's the way this works. We can do division, and I picked an easy example, six divided by three is two, and the reason we can do division is that we can work backwards as well. Two times this three over here is equal to six, so we can take this and work backwards. If that's the case, how about this? Six divided by zero, well, inevitably, kids wanna make that zero. It's not, it's actually undefined undefined, okay? But let's pretend that this actually was true right here. That would imply that I could work backwards and say that zero times zero is equal to six. And we know that that is fundamentally wrong. That's just not even remotely right. And that, my friends, this right here is why this is not equal. And instead, six divided by zero is undefined. And that will come up again soon when we talk about lines and slope. There are several other properties of equality that we're going to look at, and I've just realized that I forgot one that I'm going to have to add in um, in between here. But let's talk about these. These are, again, these are names for things you know are true. However, you have to know the names now, and that is what's new and different about them. Okay, let's go through them. The symmetric property of equality says that if A equals B, then B equals A. That's pretty straightforward, okay? That, all that's saying is I can switch it around the equal sign and it's still true. So that one's not complicated at all. The transitive property. Well, if A equals B and B is equal to C, then that means I can get these two ends here, A and C, and they are equal. I like to think of it as a little train. Train and transitive don't quite fit together, but it's darn close. So like A and B are linked up, B and C are linked up. That means A and C are also linked up. Or the other way you could think of this, guys, is to think about um, siblings. Okay, Emmy and Sarah are sisters. Sarah and Becca, that's me. I'm the Becca. Sarah and Becca are sisters. Therefore, Emmy and Becca are sisters. Okay, that's what the transitive property, property basically says. You're connecting the front and the back end of the relationship here because the middle um, part is in common. The substitution property. You've actually already used this one a whole bunch of times. Substitution property says if two values are equal, then one can replace the other in an equation or expression. You guys use that every single time that you evaluate an expression, you are using the substitution property. The one that I missed here is the reflexive property. This is probably the most, you're gonna think this is really bizarre. It's probably the most obvious one of the bunch. 
Um, it says for all numbers, all real numbers, A, that A is equal to itself. Yes, folks, there's even a property for that. I used to call it the duh property, um, but it has a name and we got to know it. The reflexive property says for all numbers A, all real numbers A, A is equal to itself. You will use this in geometry proofs, but it is one of the ones on the list of properties that we have to know for Algebra 1. Lastly, it's actually four properties listed out here. It's our equality properties right here. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. The equality properties are your equation solvers. The equation solving properties, they tell you that you can do the same thing to both sides of an equation without changing the value of that unknown. You're not changing the meaning of the equation at all. You can do the same thing to both sides with no trouble. And again, these are equation solvers. So example, let me give you a brief example of what I'm talking about. I am talking about if I had an equation like 3x equals 27, the property, the equality, the multiplication property equality is what tells me that I can divide both sides by 3 to get x equals 9. If I have something like x over negative 2 equals 8, the multiplication property of equality is what tells me that I can multiply both sides by negative 2, and it's still true, and I now know an answer, 16. And finally... that I can take these expressions and I can say that I can add or subtract, in this case subtract from both sides, and get an equation that is still equivalent to the original. Finally, that I can, for this one, add to both sides and get an equation that is still true. And of course, we will use those in a great more detail in the coming classes. I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome weekend. And if you're walking, watching this on a weeknight, I hope you're having an awesome week. And I'll see you in class.